That's my classmate right there. And we are the powerful men of Mississippi. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on the shiznit that people talk about Mississippi. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of y'all like dogs. Okay. Because there's a bunch of y'all that need to be talked about like dogs. Um, this dude right here, Carlos Moore, he graduated one year before I did, you know, same high school. I'm, man, I'm not making this up. You know, now he was way smaller. <laughs> Carlos was way smaller than that when he was in high school. He was skinny. Carlos and got big. But the brother that you're looking at behind him was a FedEx worker who was dropping off a package in a white neighborhood. And suddenly some people jumped out the woodwork <clears throat> and started chasing him. They bust some shots at him. I don't think they shot him, but they bust shots at him. And they have been indicted on attempted murder. Now, the police department tried to go out of their way. It was a couple of white men. Let me gather up their names for you. Oh, real quick. Now, this brother's name is DeMontario Gibson. Um, I guess a little bit more about him. After this incident happened, dude was dropping off a package on somebody's porch. This man got approached by a couple of white dudes, a son and a father that said, your nigger ass shouldn't be here or something to that effect. Start shooting at the dude and chasing the dude. He made it out of there alive and called his company and told him, you know what FedEx told this dude? FedEx told this dude to continue to drop off packages. <laughs> That's what FedEx legit told his man. Like, oh, well, you got shot at. You OK? OK, make sure those packages make it to their, you know, location. You OK? Just brush yourself off and huh? You know, a little old attempt at murder. Oh, well. I mean, but you're okay, right? Okay. Con continue to the next location. So, this lawsuit, and, part, and one of the points I want to make is that they always put it in the news media when black people are fucked over to make you look like the perpetual fucked over people. They always do it. They always do that. And it's hard. It's actually very difficult to do what I refer to as following justice, uh, because in Mississippi, an attempted murder is about 25 years. So what I've been doing is trying to make sure that I keep up with the court dates. Now, the father went to court someday in this month, in March. The uh, the son went to court back in January and you got to keep up with this stuff, man, because I'm telling you, black people ain't looking at this point. You're not looking. And if you ain't looking, um, uh, you know, I'm I don't feel like reading through this article, but I'll just mention that the sheriff, the police department in the area tried to not cooperate with everything. Once some black dude comes into the police department and says that some white men were shooting at me, they just go out of their way to help the white criminals. There's not going to be a million police cars all over the place looking for the couple of white men that did it. No, as far as they're concerned, he's the criminal because he's trying to get white men locked up for violating him. So the sheriff department went out of his way to not cooperate with an investigation. And now you have a couple of dudes on trial with black America not looking. And it's hard as hell to find anything, like anything whatsoever. Just like we have cop watchers, you need to have court watchers also to make sure that these people get put away. But the point that I want to make is that uh, they always cast us as victims. They never show this side of it. This needs to be shown. Like these trials need to be shown. The whole trial needs to be shown and it needs to be put on public display. What they did, the person who they did it to need to come in court and they need to be announced guilty. And as far as I'm concerned, they need to stop the press, put it on YouTube, TikTok, every goddamn where 
let that man cuss them out and let them uh, and show them going to jail. And when they go to jail, show them just the area of jail that they're going to be put in with a bunch of black dudes. And, and the very second they get knocked in the head, show that, too. That's part of the anti-justice process. The very second you ain't you ain't got to show them getting sexually violated. But but the very second they get, you know, get get that perpetual fade upside. They don't show that too. the whole process. And like I said, it's highly possible nothing will happen to these dudes because we're taught to be victims and we're just looking for the next opportunity to be victims. This right here is victory. Not only are these punks uh gonna go to jail if we're vigilant but this brother is gonna be paid he should be like i said this is just what he's looking for the five million but he should get that you know and he should get most of it from both fedex and he should sue sue the sheriff department because if they indicted them guys and if they got any evidence that the sheriff department was helping to cover it up they need to be sued also But this is justice and this is the type of justice that they don't like to show because it doesn't fit the overall narratives that they create around black American people, which is everybody. Look at the niggers that that we've shitted on. Look at the niggers that we've shitted on. Look at the niggers that we've shitted on. Not when we shit on them, they raise up and say something about it and get us put in jail. See, they they don't show that part of it. And then when the niggers make us pay them, they don't show that part of it so that uh, the racist behavior in society is completely and constantly encouraged because they are they're not showing it has a consequence. It has a penalty. Anyways, my little ramble is over. Spread this story and make sure that you don't just cop watch. You got a court watch, too. I'm out.